all for being here. I'm going to speak to you today and ask questions from the point of view of being a former mayor of a small town. And, and also, um, as part of my past life, I was uh, a very small home builder during that as well. Um, when we talk about housing affordability, I, I want to come back to the things that we've been discussing here. But I, I think we should address the elephant in the room, which is the cost of housing and the rapid rise in the increase in housing that's occurred over the last couple of years. Um, look, we've got to do things to drive down the cost of housing. That includes driving interest rates lower. Those interest rates are being driven right now by, by inflation and the Fed's response to inflation. So how do we get that under control? We have, got to, we, we have got to cut back on the federal spending and the borrowing, but we've also got to increase productivity. We need to be putting in pro-growth policies that drive the supply side of our equation. I also worry deeply about the Fed's new requirements in the Basel III um, section that, that, that I think is gonna further restrict capital. And quite candidly, we've got to do more to drive energy costs lower so that we can get back to being energy independent. Owning a house costs energy. It's part of, it's, it is part of the monthly equation and it's something that we've got to address. Another issue that is driving up costs is, is the available workforce in, in the housing, in the construction industry. While we are facing a crisis in higher education on all fronts, we should be doing more to encourage people to utilize technical schools and technical education and apprenticeships and making all types of apprenticeships available so that we can get more folks interested in the trades that we need so desperately. Um, and I think that's really important. I also think we've got to be thinking about how to how to be innovative in the use of construction materials. Um, specifically, one that I think makes a lot of sense is using mass timber or cross laminated timber. Um, I think that is something that we can build here in America, and I think ma making some of the green energy tax credits available for mass timber makes a lot of sense. In order to do that, we've also got to increase education awareness at our architectural institutes, but we've also have got to make sure that local communities zoning and planning allows for this. And also we've got to make sure that the inspectors and the permitting process allows for this as well. And again, these are state and local issues, but we need to be thinking about how we can encourage that, that to take place. Um, again, I, I, I wanna go back to, to the energy piece of it. The higher our, our energy costs, the, the less affordable a home becomes across the board. Um, and, I, and again, I think driving down inflation, driving down interest rates, increasing workforce and increasing the supply side is, will make a huge difference in the overall cost of, of, of construction. It does not matter how this, you know, how this body looks at the best way to fund it, whether it's through government subsidies or, or strictly on the private sector, there isn't enough money at the, at, at the current cost. So we've got to drive those costs down. I think, I, think, I think that's really important. Um, I, I wanna push back on one thing, um, Mr. Peter, that you said about LIHTC housing. Um, as a former mayor, um, it does work, but it is not the solution. It has to be part of an overall development plan and we should guard strongly against moving this into the middle class. Housing affordability in the middle class is a function of construction cost, interest rates, and really good paying jobs. I find it really interesting that most of the examples that you've given are all around metropolitan areas. You've talked about Oklahoma City, you've talked about Los Angeles, you've talked about you know Denver, Colorado, other areas like that. So many of our fellow Americans live in rural areas. And I think that what we've got to do is we've got to rebalance the equation, both in terms of job production and in terms of incentives for to make to close the economic viability gap in rural America, because this place has done an amazing job of turning rural America into an inner city. I do applaud the efforts for the, that, you, that you talk about with zoning and planning. It is a tough, it is a tough road to hope, no doubt. But if you get the community on board, Dr. Firth, like you talked about, you can build something, you can change the ideology of a community, and you can begin to put things in place that make sense that attract younger people to communities. I go back to what worked it through many towns throughout the South up until NAFTA, and that was these were mill villages that were built around the textile industry where you had many small houses put together um, in a relatively dense area, and many families lived not just for a period of time but for generations in these houses because these communities worked. 
And finally, I'd, I'd like to touch on the fact that I think we ought to really um, make it a priority pr to protect agri agricultural land. And Mr. Chairman, I think that that is something if through local zoning and planning and through the state, um, I think we can protect that in economically, uh, environmentally sensitive areas. Things like conservation eas easements are a really good tool. They need some reforms, but they do help protect environmentally sensitive areas. So I, I know I've spent a lot of time talking. I love this topic. Uh, I, bottom line, the, the, so much of this has got to be done at the local level. But our job here in Congress is to, is to make housing more affordable by ending the crushing inflation that is, that is just crippling American families up and down the economic spectrum right now. With that, I yield back. 